Hi everybody, Mary here and welcome to week four, I think we're on. Um, and this is chapter three on projectiles. And this is going to be kind of a short week. This is one chapter. It's a relatively short chapter. There are not a lot of new equations, uh, but we're going to apply what we did, have done the last couple of weeks, uh, the velocity, the acceleration equations, displacement time. But now we're going to start doing, instead of one-dimensional motion, we're going to start doing two-dimensional motion. So we're going to have objects that are going to be moving forward while they're moving up and down. So that's just not that com more complicated. We're, instead of doing one set of equations, we're going to be doing two parallel sets of equations. And uh, hang on, it's really not as bad as it sounds. So let's take a look at Canvas and let's see what we've got going this week. Um, first off, let's take a look at our schedule. So for week four, this is going to be chapter three, Vectors, Trig, and Projectiles. What we've got to do this week are one projectile motion lab, a study guide, a homework, and a concepts quiz and a test. So that sounds like a lot due all in one week, but the test is small. Instead of a 100 point test, this is a 50 point test. The concept quiz is still 30 points, but it's a smaller set of homework, study guide, and one lab. And why am I doing one chapter all by itself? Well, quite frankly, because the next one, Newton and Forces, is kind of a big beast. And I don't like mixing a test between three and four. I've discovered through the years that students do not do well when I mix three and four together. So we're going to have a little test on three, and then we're going to have one comprehensive test on just chapter four. So that's what the schedule looks like. Uh, we're going to be in module three. And so let's go back to modules. We're going to start off the chapter with a little bit of trigonometry review. If you have had some trig, sine, cosine, tangent recently, this is going to be old news for you. So again, uh, this is probably the last time all semester that I'm going to say if you are 100% familiar with this, you are welcome to skip this, but some people have never had any trigonometry, and some people have had it a long, long time ago. So this is just sine, cosine, and tangent. There is a non-graded trig review and the key, and then I included a second video that is extra trig practice. If this is a new skill for you, please spend some time with the videos and the practice. If this is something you're very comfortable with, please feel free to skip this. We have a study guide over chapter three, projectiles and trig and vectors. So it's uh, those are the three big topics we're gonna go through. We have homework problems, of course, for this chapter as always. And as always, they are chunked. And as always, there are videos on the individual problems. Let's spend a minute or two talking about the homework problem videos, and I know I fight with this little slidey thing all the time. Uh, come on, there we go. Now, let me give you a caution about the videos. I know some students are tempted to not try the problems, and they are tempted to just watch the videos and copy down what I write down. You may have found the last chapter that if you did that, you may have been very insecure when it came to the test. These are here to help you. I really encourage you, give each problem your best guess. Try it really, really hard on your own. Um, look at the answers at the end of the problems. And if you can't figure out how you did it wrong, then go to the videos. That's why they're there to assist you. But I've also had numerous students through the years that all they do is sit and copy down my videos, and trust me, they do not do well on the test. And the tests actually make up not quite 50% of your total grade. So you gotta know your stuff by the time you get to the test. We're also gonna talk about vector addition. Vectors have both direction and magnitude. Um, again, if you've had maybe tech math or one of those higher level math courses recently, this is not going to be news to you, but for some people, they've never added vectors. So we're going to take straight line motion and vectors and trig, put them all together with projectiles. Projectiles are two-dimensional motion, baseballs, footballs, things that go flying through the air. 
The math is no more complicated than we did last chapter. We are just going to be doing a column for horizontal velocity and a column for vertical velocity. And with a projectile, there is always a shared variable. Sometimes and often it's time. Sometimes it's going to be something else. So this page is all on horizontal with some cool little demos in between here and some practice problems. Please pay attention to these notes that say when you get to this point, then you can do this batch of homework problems. And when you get there, uh, done with that bit, then you can do projectile shot at an angle. This is a well-punted football. This is a baseball home run, something that goes through the air with an upward and downward part of its trajectory, a well-hit golf ball, something like that. So that is what we are up to this week. Our projectile lab is particularly fun. It's always a crowd pleaser. Students seem to really enjoy it. Um, for the projectile lab, you are going to be setting up in your home an inclined plane, um, and you're going to have a ball that is going to roll down the ramp. It is then going to go on your little plastic ruler. You're going to use that ruler to make sure that it comes off the table or countertop horizontally because you want this to be a horizontal projectile. What's going to happen at that point in time is it's then going to go flying through the air. Yes, that's a picture of my cat. My cat was helping me when I was setting up this lab in my home. Um, and you are going to measure the horizontal displacement. How far does that projectile land? And then you're going to calculate that distance. And as we often do in physics, we're going to do a percent difference between those two. Now, when you show me these calculations, I want to see the complete calculations in physics labs. You always show me everything. Show the setup, show the work, make sure you put units on everything. And some of you have already found out that if you don't show units, etc., you're going to get some points off on labs. This is where you actually show all your work in physics. And uh, in the lab, you're going to keep changing the angle at which these projectiles are launched. That's going to give them an increased horizontal velocity. And it's kind of a fun lab. It's kind of noisy. Things go flying through the air. Please use your safety goggles. I, it would still be a silly way to get injured by doing a physics lab in your own home. And nobody wants you or anyone you love hurt. So I hope you have a super duper week. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. All righty. Bye-bye.